Okay, guys, I think it's time to go ahead and start analyzing the um, um, the Kochnoi game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now I will show the game if I played you... with Kochnoi. Uh, 1884. Yeah. 1984. This is gonna be really exciting. I'm very, very excited to show this. Okay. So look at this, guys. Before we before we do anything, before we do anything, look at this picture which we have here. Look at the picture which we have here, which is P is on the left, and then we have Korchnoi as well. Mm. Um, but, but this picture is from Lois Bank 82. Um, it was the first time I played her, and and Korchnoi, he was highest rated player. Uh, I think he had 26 or 5, I had 22, was it 80 or 30 something, 22 something. And you were I, 19 then. Uh, I, I was 19 yeah. and I, I got to play him in round, maybe it was a 6 or something. And then it was it was this big hall we were playing in and yeah. the top boys were playing on a kind of podium. So I was happy, I was managed to get up to play on one of the top boys and I, was ha and I, I got to play him. And that game ended in a draw. It was a Spanish, I played D4, we call it Centrum Gambit. And, and after, this is in the analysis after, and I, uh, I actually had a win in the end, I missed, but I was very pleased to, to play with him. Uh, Kochner was my idol. And, uh, of course, he was, was one of the strongest player in, players in the world. I mean, yeah, he yeah. Oh, so strong. Yeah, but I also liked his fighting spirit. I started to play French because because of him and he was you know always fighting the game maybe he had difficulties in the game but he was were keeping lots of resistance so yeah but it was just a great moment and after the game when we were analyzing there were so many people players coming up and uh, also Koshno he was very very relaxed very very kind yeah so it was a great moment and then it was Steen who pointed out Pia he, I didn't. He didn't say that, but wasn't this a win? And well, yeah. it, it was. But I, I didn't see it in the game. I, I'm sure Koshno surely saw it in the game. But it was time travel, and uh, yeah. So Let's just just so that it, it's for sure. This photo is not from this game, then. So just like you said, but just to make it sure, this photo was from 1982. Huh? But you know, we can imagine that it pretty much looked the same way two years later. Yeah. When you played. Yeah, right? I guess I guess I think I still had a short hair. <laughs> you still had the same haircut and, and everything. Yeah, but yeah, so. the, it's from two years before. But this game so that game ended in a draw and this game is the one that we're gonna look at. Yeah. So. And it was so so Anna showed the photo, but we will look at the game. So I played before. Yeah. He played Karkan and then you know most people go d4 but I played c4 and the reason is I, I wanted to play this Panoff variation but I wanted to play with this move order so here you go d4 you get a normal Panoff so and of, I want to say of course here yeah but uh, uh, I actually played uh, I took here and the reason I think was that in this position the main move now is to take on d5 but if you want to play with fianchetto, which is also quite a normal way. Now this is, I can go bishop c4 and maybe I will not put the pawn on d4, maybe I put it on d3. So it always guard my bishop. And if you, if you go some, feel like, I don't know, 90, 97, 96, it's, it's guarded here. So this was my idea. But coach, no, he was a classical player. And so now I think d5, normal development. Here you can play in different ways. I guess, well, but he played a classical way, the e6, and you're blocking your bishop, and uh, but you want to get out with that one very quickly. So I went d4, and now we have a position you can also get from, if you start with Queen's Gambit, it could be from Tarash. I was going to say that, and I actually like this position. <laughs> I want to have a position like this, because I feel sort of familiar from it, from playing with the Queen's Gambit, yeah. even though it transposed after, you know, playing... Uh, against the Karakhan, so... Yeah, yeah, there, but, is, yeah. Yeah, there, is, there, are, there are lots of positions which can transpose. And here, you know, I coach no play what I think is the best. He played his bishop before, and... Okay, so he's having threats against c3, which means I have to defend it some way. I, mm. I did a bishop d2. I can also do it with queen c2, but the problem is that my queen is on his back square on d1, actually. It's better on d1 than on c2 because he's looking at an I on d4. And my bishop is actually better on c1 than on d2. Because when it's on d2, the move I played, it, d4 is not defended in the same way. So, 
So, and he went, what did he go? He went maybe knight c6. I went bishop d3. This is a normal way to put it. I could also go bishop c4. Mm. Uh, I could have done that also. But um, then we see the d4 a little. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask, because mm. we have a question in the chat, mm? if there are any problems with uh, the isolated d-pawn in this opening. Yeah, this is very typical in, in this opening to, ha to have this isolated uh, pawn. And that means that uh, I, with white, I need to keep the pieces. I need to have a lot of pieces. If you start changing pieces, normally uh, we go into the endgame, this pawn will just become weaker and weaker. And finally, it will be only white, black who can play for a win. So I need to keep a lot of pieces. So normally the conversation I have is that I have activity, a lot of piece play, and uh, um, and have line, more open lines. You see, I have an open E line here. I have also open C line. I can try to get some frets against the king and uh, and it's very important to keep the control of the square in front of the isolated pawn so it's so important to keep control of d5 this is the main thing actually and of course i have to keep an eye on my d4 pawn but sometimes like in the game mm. i will have some uh, yeah you will see black will yeah. attack my pawn and i have to make a choice to defend it or not mm. so uh, yeah so here, now he made bishop e7. So he made, he lost the tempo. But he lost the tempo because he wanted my bishop to be on d2 instead of c1. Yeah, okay. And it's because now d4 a little bit lost. I mean, if I make castling, maybe, maybe he can start considering this. And this is getting... The d4 pawn becomes very weak then. Yeah. Maybe he could start uh, doing that. So I, I played a3 here. a3 is, it's, it's okay move to play. You, to avoid... Um, night before sometimes you have ideas but now the bishop against is stand on c2 c d2 sometimes you have idea bishop c2 queen d3 but with the bishop on d2 i will need to waste a tempo to put it out and you see this bishop hmm bishop f4 not possible bishop e5 either so this bishop is better on c1 yeah so yeah, it just doesn't seem to be a happy bishop there on d2 no so this why this bishop f4 is quite a clever move to, to play when you when you get the chance to do that but so here he went bishop f6, I castle, and the, okay, if you know, if you take this way, it's still early. I, I have this, I have this check here now. Ah, uh, so, yeah, you win a piece. So, so yeah. and, and really, you don't want to take on d4 before castling. Hmm. But now he castled, and now you have this coming. And if my bishop would have been on c1, the main move is bishop e4 to try to control on d5. This is what I said. Yeah. This is very much about the control on d5. But now, you know, if I go here, yeah, uh, you just you, take. You can start taking my yeah. pawn. So, so it's not. Uh, it's something is. Uh, it's, it's not the same any longer. And this is why I. I, I uh, this is a little bit more awkward. I can of course play bishop e3. But if the bishop was on c1, bishop e3 is not the main move, mm. which means that black has been clever. He has tricked me into something. Mm. Which is um, um, which is a little more is a little bit more awkward for me just because it's a little bishop move. Yeah, and I think that's that's so interesting how the move order can have such a such a difference in games. Yeah, yeah. The move order of things. So the fact that I went bishop before, you know, told it, said that you had to go bishop d two and then went back. Yeah. So he basically just just got a tempo there. I got of. the tempo, but the yeah. tempo I did I didn't want to have. Exactly, I, exactly, yeah, exactly. You I got the tempo, but it almost was like like your opponent your opponent got a tempo because you actually want to have the bishop on c one. Yeah, yeah. Now I would absolutely have the bishop on e oh, seven. I would have preferred. And I, I'm I'm sure I was thinking about this in the game that of course he played bishop before this of course because this makes it more more uh, tricky. Yeah. For me, but it, but when you white, um, if even if black is also because. Koshna, he likes to he likes to grab pawns, and this I knew. He's, he was very famous for liking to grab a B2 pawn in in different lines, which can be the you know very dangerous pawn to take. So, uh, so what I did here, I I didn't want to go bishop e3, which yeah. is the most played move, yeah. because because this is not the way I, I used to play. I used to, I like to have this bishop e4, but here it's not the same, because as we said, the bishop is in the way. So I play queen e2 here. This is what I did. Hmm. So, and and the idea is that, okay, first of all, he, he cannot take... Yeah, uh, I was going to ask what happens if, if yeah, yeah, no, he if takes it, on If he takes this way, and I go okay. here, 
Uh, now, if I go queen e4, Ooh. he has knight f6. Yeah. So, so this is okay. But I can I can play here. Yeah. Here. And I, I go queen d3. And he goes somewhere. And I, I pick it up. And this is, it's about equal. And this is the point. I have the advantage. I'm being white. And normally with black, first you try to equalize. And then we try for something more. But this is equal. And it's a very, very solid position. Mm. No? Uh, so... so I would I would be happy to play a position like this with Kochnoi. So that's uh so so no he didn't do that. And what more so he actually what he did is but he grabbed the pawn. I think he could only if he wanted he could play just a slow mo maybe like g6, just to keep the tension, because I still need to, to make a decision with my d4 pawn. Maybe 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 I can go some rook d1 and let him take it. But I, I think maybe just some some uh, slower move, but he took it and he took it uh, this way. The with the bishop? bishop. Mm, he oh. took it with the bishop. And the idea is that, for example, if I now want to take with a knight here, and okay, queen e4, we had this we saw knight. Yeah, so the same idea there. I can go here. And if I go check here, here, and check here. Now we have knight f5. Uh, so you can block with the knight then, oh. the check. Yeah. So, so we have... Or maybe you have, you yeah. have g4 here. Yes. You, you, yes. Like yeah, you can go g4, but I, I take on c3. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so you so, just... Yeah. But also, you know, even if I win back, <laughs> look at my king side. You see, I would lose a pawn. So yeah. Even, that now I will lose a piece, no? So, so but even if I, I would win it back, it would hmm. be... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It would just be such a bad king side yeah. for me. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mm. look good. Yeah. So no, this I couldn't play. Yeah. And uh, so what I did is uh, I I didn't take here. So I I just I took on d5 simply. And now the point is if you take with a pawn, then I, I go check here, I go check and I take on d4, and my opponent has an isolated pawn. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know these things. But it doesn't work, right? Yeah, because it doesn't work because this bishop, bishop f5. Yes. I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work. So yeah, you always have to be careful for this. Yeah. But it no, it doesn't work. But I just you just go queen d3 and whatever. Okay, you can go bishop f5 if you want, but you will you will stay with an isolated pawn. So yeah. this will be more pleasant for for me. And because also in the end games, the pawn end games will be winning. Because you have three against two, you have a pawn more far away. So a pawn ending would be winning if you change all, mm. all the pieces. So these things is always good to, to, to think about. But you you don't want to have this isolated pawn, no. So. No, so that's that's a really good thing that you're saying. Um that you need to think about where where the pawns are and how that will affect the end game. So yeah. for example here where black has an isolated pawn, but white has instead three versus two on the king side. Mm. It's just like for example those three versus two on the queen side. I mean What's going to happen is that white is going to have a majority in one of the sides and thus it's going to be a better pawn in game, right? Yeah, and also, yeah. and not only even that, because when you have, when black is missing the h pawn, you can put up the pieces. It's, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, when, uh, what did I say? Yeah, I, t I took on d5. Ah, sorry, Hum, this is a game, so this is the main line. So I took on d5, yeah, this is what I was showing. So here, here, let's say that you go go back and now you see I will take here though let's say that we have like a, we have different color bishops so maybe this is a, maybe this is good chances for 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 a draw but I am happy uh, but it but I have the stronger bishop so and you will keep the the, the passive bishop hmm. and so I, I believe even maybe try to even play for 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 an, an attack that try to get up a rook to the third rank but what I want to say with the pawn end game is that not only that we have three against two, the G and H means that I will get one of them will be pass pawn, which means that the black king needs to stay here. Exactly, yeah. Needs to stay because it's it's also a, a pass pawn which is far away. Hmm. So so it will be even easier for for white to play this. And then pawn white game. Mm. can get the king to the other side, right? Yeah, or to d4. Yes, they take d5. d5. This is where I want to. to Stuff like it. this, but this is the end game. So this is hmm. uh, this is. Obviously, in the future, but it's really important to think about that throughout the whole game. Yeah, it is very good it, always mm. to think about uh, what exchanges, how are the pawn structure, what end games can I go to, and what pieces do I want to change. So he played there. I took on d5. He took with a queen on d5. 
I played a uh, bishop e4 here, and I think um, may maybe rook a d1 is the most exact move. Try to get something. He's uh, out of a given pawn, but now there are some activities. But but I think it's about level this position. But I was you know I took here, and here, and then I took a d4. So I have we have different color bishop, and, but we have all the heavy pieces, and I am pawn down, but. I know if you change all the heavy pieces, this disposition is a draw because it's mm. different color bishop. So even if black has one pawn more on the king side, if you change everything, this will not be enough. So I was quite, this was okay for me to play. But of course, um, I mean, if it were the other way around, Koshner was white, he wouldn't, he would have had, liked to have, of course, more with white. Mm. He wouldn't be happy with that. But for me, this was fine. I, I, I wanted... This is quite solid for me. That's the nice thing about being an underdog. That stuff like this is fine. Just like you were saying before that you prefer to be an underdog. Yeah. So I went bishop before and now yeah. you can't go c5 because I will just, I don't know which rook, I guess maybe this rook, you will just pick up the pawn. You'll pick up the pawn. Yeah. Ah. So he went rook e8. I thought if he go rook d8, I will, I will change and maybe he will get some backwards problems. This is what I thought, but, but maybe, I don't know if this is better. He still has this pawn, but... Uh, the exchanges for me are good and we can never it's difficult to exchange the, the, the bishops it's it's difficult and I will always keep the bishop on the board but he went rook e8 so like this here and queen d6 he wanted to have his queen close to his pawn and uh, of course if he had this this would be better for him of course yeah this would be better this is just a little bit uh, this, this pawn is sometimes a little bit even in the way for the bishop yeah. I'd like to come up there. So the bishop is dreaming on coming to d5. Maybe the bishop can go to a6 and go that way, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, this is actually what happened. So, yeah. so I went queen e5 here just to... I didn't want him to get to play e5. And if he gets to play e5, he has to go f6. And this is maybe a move he could consider here to play it off. But he didn't want to. So he played queen b5. I went queen c7. He went back. And I will, of course, not take because look here. Then he will yeah. give very nice pawn. And he's a pawn up, so... And he's, yeah, and, and he has improved his position. And he has improved the pawn position, so, yeah. So th that's, of course, not... It, and so I he went queen... I went... So see what he will do here. So queen to six. I went back. He went a5. And now I actually went bishop c5. Uh, maybe bishop c3 would have been preferable. Maybe just to put it here. But I, I wanted to keep this pawn down. And uh, because after I go here, if I, if I go some, uh, he go f6, queen d6, maybe he, he will come out here, there will come a rook d8 soon. So I, I somehow, I didn't want to play this. So this is why I went bishop c5, and here. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you go, wait, after bishop c3, mm -hmm. f6? Yes, no, this is what you go queen g3. No, you know, the, actually, this is what I should have played. Sorry, or, or no, queen no. somewhere here. Yes, yeah. I should go queen h5. This, this is the good move. Okay, this is good because now, uh, now this is a little bit uh, unpleasant for him because, uh, mm, you, you're not very happy to go. If Wait. you go bishop a6, mm, a rook here, you didn't. Yeah, know, that's this, what I was gonna ask. This, yeah. this, this is just uh, feels really unpleasant because also no, this is this is getting dangerous. You're threatening to take on f6 as well. Yeah, here, right. No, this is getting dangerous. So you don't want this. A queen h5, and if you go g6, mm. uh, you go maybe I go here, and where where is uh, yeah. So if you go, so so this was what I should have done. Yes, to to play, and yes to to try to encourage him to move his king side pawns so he becomes more weaker. Mm. Yeah. So, so maybe here, I don't know what is the right, uh, maybe, maybe you go rook f8, but uh, I still think this is the way I should have, uh, should have played here now, now maybe. The king side looks very weak. Mm. Now rook up! I like oh, that. Rook up, so. Rook up! Uh, maybe, or maybe rook d6, but you have e5 is coming, so yeah, I'm not sure, uh, so, but maybe this was the better way to play. But I played uh, bishop c5. Yeah, he went queen b3, and now I play something, which is uh, probably is not the correct way to play. Uh, now again, yeah, now again, I should have played this bishop c4, f6, and here. This is mm. the way I should probably have played here. Yeah, again. Mm. And if g6, 
Well, just, then it just becomes yeah, really see, weak. Then it becomes very weak, so you don't. Yeah. So, so I think I should have played that also. But I played with F4. And the problem with F4 is now, hmm, if, he gets, a, if he gets a bishop to d5, g4, hmm. g2 is very weak. But the reason I played f4 was I didn't want him to play e5. I want to stop it forever. Mm. So I, I played this f4. But this is, mm, it's, it's, uh, it's weakening my, my king, uh, actually. So now he played bishop a6. Yeah. Okay. I went With the back. idea of bishop c4, bishop d5, like yeah, you said. Yeah, but now yeah. I got in this. And now my plan is, of course, if he goes on bishop c4, there's no time. I have this, and now it's just made. Very nice. Very, you, do you want to show the checkmate? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, sorry. So sorry. We should always go out. So, so yeah. here, and you go down, and here. So this is very uh, nice. This is one reason when you are attacking, it's good uh, to have when you have heavy pieces like rooks and queens on the board, and you are you have the initiative. You can play against the king. Then it's actually good to have different kind of bishop because we can attack a square that the opponent bishop cannot defend. So when you're attacking, this is it could be just an advantage, no? Hmm. So this is why in this position he played B queen c2, I went bishop here and now queen d6. Yeah, defending with the queen. Mm -hmm. I went here uh, rook e1, but I could actually here, actually I could even have taken the pawn here. This is maybe what I should have done here and to play like, like, like this, yes. And uh, we, we we play this, uh, uh, yeah, this is maybe rook c1 here. So it, it's, but, but now you see the pawn would have been much better left to yeah, this, of position, this position or f2, maybe f3. This is what I yeah. would like, the f3 and queen f2, just to not to have the bishop playing. So queen here, and uh, now I played, but I didn't, I went rook e1. Yeah. He went f6. Oh, it's an idea with rook e1. Can I just ask? It's an idea then to go perhaps uh, f5. Because if queen takes, there's a checkmate on g7. And if pawn takes, there is this rook king. Yeah, exactly. So, so f5 it, maybe is an idea. Yeah, f5 is, is, is it's, it's getting like a threat. Because also, if I get in, let's say you do something slowly, I don't know, if you say some slow more, yeah. I get in f4. And you go here. And if I get. Maybe, yeah, um, maybe now even, maybe queen c7, yeah, but it's getting so, it's getting weak, so you, you really don't want to do that, okay, maybe, I don't know if you want to have like this, maybe this is blocking, but this is, yeah. Is there, no, maybe, and now maybe rook takes f7, I was going to ask if that, yes, uh, yes, this, uh, and, and we have this, <laughs> and king f8, we bishop have bishop c5, uh, and then we have, uh, f7, uh, and then we have, um, yeah, what we, do we have now? We can make Jack! <laughs> so we, we will, yeah. So, so then we, we will, yes, yeah, so win this. Um, so, this looks awesome. Yeah, so but so, so this is true. f5 is the threat. And I guess this is, ah, this is why I play rookie one. I, I wanted to have, I wanted, I wanted to threaten something, <laughs> but maybe root, just take the pawn would have been better. So, and I forced him now to go f6. And the reason I went queen c5 was I wanted to avoid him to take, uh, to, to, to win, go bishop c4, bishop d5. But again, maybe just again, I should take the pawn here and I come, come down like this and to play, to, to play this position here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, I, I'm weakened on g2 and you see with the pawn on f6, black's king side is safer than mine. But okay, I have a rook on the 7th, but black will change it, yeah. The so bishop the, is so strong on d5. Now the bishop is very strong on d5. Yeah. And I, what I want to do, maybe I want to go queen f2, queen g3. I, I really want to get rid of the queens yeah. here. If I get rid of... The, but but th this I think is... It, it, it's uh, it, it's okay to play for, for white. Maybe a little more pleasant for black, but... I am holding, so, uh, so, but I, I wasn't, uh, so I play, oh, sorry, so f6 came, I play queen c5, and now he played a good move, queen f5, queen f5, and I always knew that uh, uh, Koshna is very good in any game, yeah. and uh, I, um, probably I have to take, but it's a little more pleasant for white, black now, when I take here, because he's still a pawn up, he has very, He's very safe here, and uh, and uh, he, like well, let's say we could do something like this here. You go bishop c4 and you take, and you can see 
I, I somehow have to avoid this, but here we need to, I am saying what could happen. And the may, I mean, very many moves, but, yeah. this, but this, yeah. is ba this, is, this is bad. This is advantage for black, this position. Mm. So it's not forced, but uh, it's, it's, this, the end game now is it's better for black. It's mm. not better for black. And I don't want to play an end game, which is better for, for my opponent, <laughs> who is such a strong end game player. And I remember, mm. I, I saw Seruan, he was speaking about the rook end games. And Yasu Seira, yeah. and um, who he doesn't play so much, but he's commenting a lot. And he said that when he was thinking of Rook end games, there were three players he was thinking of. It was Akiba Rubinstein, and it was Kochnoi, and it was one more, I, I forgot the name. Yeah. And it's the same for me. When I think of Rook end games, because I've seen Kochnoi win some in a very nice way, I am, yeah, I'm thinking of him. So I didn't want to go into no. the end game. So I play Bishop D6, I play Queen D6. And now, um, but now, uh, now he makes a mistake. He makes a mistake. Korchnoi makes a mistake. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was very, yeah, I was happy that he did Did you that. realize immediately that it was a mistake? I was happy when he played the move. And it's a little bit like when, uh, when the opponent makes a move you don't expect. Mm, I love jump up or fall. Oh, is it possible? And the, what he should play is, uh, he should just activate his bishop. Bishop C4. So uh, bishop c4, bishop d5, and black is over. This is because no. the problem is I want if I play here and here, I want to go rook e3, rook g3, but I don't have time for this. This is yeah. the problem. After this here, bishop here. If I go here, I will actually be I will be mated here. Oh wow! So, yeah. I, Wait, I, do you want to show yeah, show it? I think. And um, let's see. Okay, if you go here, you, you, you just grab the bishop. It's oh. not, you have queen and four, and you oh. take the bishop. King so, in the center. Yeah, the king in the center. And if I go here, here, you see? It's just, here it comes. Oh my. Yeah. And now, again. Oh, you, you could take the bishop, but, but no, oh, I yeah. can't take the bishop. No, you can't take the bishop, but here it's mate. So, huh. so, no, I can't do that. So, what I need to play is probably here, I need to go h3, bishop d5, and rook e2. But, I don't know if there are some tricks with queen. No, not queen if the rook is hanging. And but this is hmm. I am not very happy here actually. Yes, I'm not. Uh, I mean, once again, the bishop is just so incredible. No, no, this is so incredible strong. I my plan is to go king h two, and I need to get back with my queen. My queen hmm, on c seven. Maybe you can go rook c eight, and I perhaps I have to go queen b six just to try to defend my bishop, but this is it's a little bit uh, it's unpleasant for mm. me with the bishop on b5. And I wanted to say also that in the, this it doesn't work queen takes c6 because, not because of bishop b5, this one, this I can go, I can go queen c1 defending my pawn, and if you go queen d4, I am defending here. Mm. If, and if you go like rook c8, I have bishop c3, I'm <laughs> so the rook is not coming in and I am holding here. So, and if you try like e5, no, there's a piece hanging. Yeah, so, and you so, cannot even take the bishop back because of the pin. I, yeah, yeah, not even take it back. But, of course, the bishop can go on that diagonal, but it also has this diagonal. No! <laughs> the bishop has two <laughs> diagonals! Yeah, and and that's, that, diagonal that's well. just the killing me, yeah. Yeah, that it, is it, just it, it, Yeah, this is just good night. So, yeah. so <laughs> it's, it's not possible. <laughs> so after bishop c4, it would have been just a big advantage for black here. And I don't know why he, he, he didn't play this move because it's such a, it's, it's just so logical. Uh, he put bishop on d5 and then, then it's fine to have this pawn on c6. It's, it's defended from both sides. Maybe you can later on has, have a, okay, maybe not do e5, but on d5 it's just defending everything. And uh, with the pawn on f6, I don't get so many threats to g7 because the king can also defend it. So it was very logical. But he didn't play, he made a mistake, he played e5. Hmm. So that was a mistake. So I took, and he took, and now of course if I take with the rook, there is, whoops, this is a oh. mate, here is back ranked mate. Oh and That's such a sneaky mate. Yeah, I could actually have taken that way, but I didn't like to be in the pin, so. And if you take with the queen, you, you can play like this. And this will be actually, this will be a perpetual here. So check, and here. Yeah, you need and to go up to defend the rook. Yeah, so, so, so this would be in a 
yours would be equal with this. But uh, so I could have taken, but I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't like to go into the pain. And so, and the normal move here is bishop c3. But I, for some reason, I played bishop c5. This is very, this is a very strange decision, uh, actually. And uh, I don't really know why I play bishop c5 here now. Uh, actually, bishop c3 is more logical because you are looking against the g7, and one day I can take on e5. And uh, did you maybe want to defend f2? Yeah, I think this is what, what I want. I wanted to defend f2, but actually I could also have gone here because if you go rook f8, I go h3, and after queen f2 here, it's still uh, you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's defended. Yeah. And after you know, I take an e5, I will be quicker. With yeah. More threat. Uh, so you have more threats. Um, so bishop c3 was more logical. I went uh, bishop uh, c5, and you know now he makes. This is very typical. Now he make another, he make a blunder here. So he makes a move that loses the game. So this is, um, it's very, I, I, I'm not sure if he was in time travel or not. It could have been. And uh, here, yeah, what could be logical? Yeah, he could play like queen d6 if he wants to change queens. I would change and I go rook d6. And maybe a little more pleasant for me this actually. Hmm. Uh, but, but again, we have this different color bishop, but we have rooks on, so, but I guess it, it would have been a draw after that. So he could have played like that. He could also, I don't know, here, maybe he could go, and go some, I don't know where, or play something else. But he played, he played his queen f6, and this was just blundering Ooh, the whole wait, position. Wait, can I see? Yeah. Hmm. Can I see? Let me think, let me think. Wow, it's so it's kind of refreshing to know that that so strong players can blunder as well. Yeah, you know uh, who was it who said that? Uh, yeah, chess is a lot of psychological. Maybe it was you, the Polgar. Yeah, there was someone uh, who said it that you, the Polgar, has said that uh, chess is thirty, at least thirty, maybe forty percent psychological. It's, yeah. So you make moves against one opponent that you wouldn't make against another one. Yeah. So I think if, if Koshin would have played against someone higher rated, he would never, never play like he did against, he wouldn't play this, at least mm. not Queen F6, no, which is a blunder, yes. It's, it's, it's a blunder. If I, I, I don't, I don't know really also, what, but Queen F6 is a blunder. Why is it a blunder? Is it because take, takes you get the rook up, like rook E3? Or why is it a blunder? Exactly. Is it is it is that the idea? Yeah, exactly. He has to take and rook e3. Because so I just felt then you're bringing the rook. Mm -hmm. I mean, the king just looks so unsafe. The king is so unsafe, and huh. you know when you when you have a you say when you have a rook on seven, it's it's or seventh or second rank uh, for black. So now I have my rook on seven or on the d seven. It's it's compensating for yeah. a pawn. But the problem is that I don't have only one rook on the seven. I will get another one also. So here. What can he do? He played king h8, and I, I, I just went here, and there is no bishop e3. I, I just take it. Wow! So, and this must have felt so good. So he, and he <laughs> resigned here. And the point is that if you go rook, you go rooks. I don't know where you go with rook. Let's say you go rook here, try to get some. Uh, th then I can go here, and I can actually just play bishop e7 if I want. Wow, play. that's such a nice move. I, I can play this. That's way. such a nice move. If, if I want, so so it's uh, so because if rook takes d7, there's bishop takes f6. Yes, and then we go like this, and we will take it with a like this. And now I'm threatening to win the rook. I'm threatening late also. So after rook f8, we have this, and you know this end game is is the winning for for white. Yeah. Wow. Mm. So this is what what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's so nice. Thank <laughs> you.